first, I want to go over where we're at, what we're doing. Um, last week, we kind of blocked in uh, this um, chest part of the dress. Uh, there are still areas that are not painted yet. The little trim where the segments meet. And I was going to do that today first, but instead I'm going to tackle this chair. Uh, I think it just goes perfect with the introduction of the... Why do I keep trying to point it? Why, why? You know where it is. I don't need to show you where it is. Anyway, I think it goes really well. We're going to actually be using color. If we aren't, if we do this, we're going to be working with one really ugly mixed grayish brown. That's, that's not what, that's not how we want to, we want to introduce our, oh my God, I'm still doing it. We're going to start off color by color in the order that I set up my palette. There are so many different ways to do this. Um, some people sort their paints by opacity. Some people sort their paints by hue. Some people uh, organize their palette by permanence. And I kind of like to combine all of them, I guess, a little bit. What I do is I start with white. I got to see how this works. Okay, we're going to start with white. Wait, you can't see that far on my phone like I can. Um, right there. Okay. Fair enough. So we're going to start with a very, very little bit of white. Now, I don't know if this is lit well enough. I might have to look into that for next stream. We'll see how it is with color. So, start with white. What I do is I move to my yellows. So, so using a warm and cool yellow. This is the cool yellow that I start with because it is very light. Um, it is very uh, permanent. Permanence meaning how um, how strong it is. I guess you could say. Um, how quickly or easily it will overtake your mixture. Uh, next we have a very opaque color, which is my warm yellow. And I really hope I don't run out of space here, but we'll see. Next we have the warm red, also a very permanent, or not permanent, opaque color. So. you'll see that they are going in order of hue. So we're starting with yellow, essentially going through the rainbow and ending at blue. I don't know why this tube does not want to cooperate, but uh, how's everybody doing? If, you were, uh, if you're in the United States, how was your long weekend? If you're not in the United States, how was your normal weekend? Hope you're having a, a good Monday. It's even Monday for you. If you're in uh, if you're in Asia, it might just be Tuesday right now. Who knows? We have our red. Come on, this one's super oily, so it doesn't want to stick. So we gotta like force it and then give it a shake. And that's not gonna work, so we have to chop it off. Oh no, what have I done? Well, I was gonna set this up so it looked good, but I think we're I think we're past that point. So that's what happens. Um, certain paints specifically 
um, are more oily than others. That one is very oily. I need my paper towels. I don't know what I did with them. Did they not survive the, the trains? Oh, here they are. And if that happens, if they separate like that, and there's a lot of oil, not a problem. Doesn't really change anything. So, moving on. The next color is our warm, cool blue. I can never tell which one's considered warm or cool. I think they could go either way. It's already Tuesday here. Good evening. Hey, what's up, Bates? I'm glad you can make it. It's crazy that it's not the same day as it is here, but I guess that's how Tom zones work. Uh, hope you had a good weekend. So you had a, a successful stream this weekend, or maybe two. I, I didn't see both of them. But yesterday was pretty awesome. So, as one blue, we have our cerulean blue. I'm almost out of cerulean blue, and that is going to be a problem in a few days. So I need to figure that out. Okay, is that looking on camera? It's a little dark, a little dark. My uh, ultramarine blue looks black, but that's okay. And here we have our burnt umber. It's a very versatile show. I end this with. Now, sometimes I will also include black. And I do have black right here. And that would be at the very end. Eh, let's, let's load it on anyway, just to get a nice full palette, even though we are going to use it. You can see my black is almost completely full because there's usually a better way to make a dark color. Uh, black kind of just makes things lifeless. So if you want to make something lifeless uh, in an oil painting, use lots of black. It does have a purpose. So we have our palette. It's not quite as good as I'd like it to look, but figure out the lighting later. I do have a free, uh, a freed up lamp uh, with this new setup. So I need to look at my source here and it looks like we're gonna be using a lot of reds and yellows, a little bit of blue. We're gonna have to paint in some wrinkles in the fabric, so I'm going to start with a very neutral reddish orange. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to start with some of my burnt umber, which this is not the easiest place with the tripod right there, but we're just going to take a little bit and we're going to lay it out here. Now, if this was a little bit better situated uh i keep it in line with with the, the at least one of the colors i'm working with um, remember you want to mix with your palette knife not your brush so we're going to take some of this reddish orange and we're going to mix it in and we're going to mix it so we just kind of mush it a little bit scrape it up Mush it and repeat the process until this is mixed completely. Sometimes you want to get paint that's on the top of the palette knife into the mix there. And that is mixed good enough for what we're doing here. So 
what I what I have here essentially is a very muted, um, very muted red, right? Good thanks. How was yours? Uh, my day was good. My weekend was excellent. Long weekend, three days. I had lots of time uh, to relax, work on the stream. Uh, it was great. So we have this muted red. And now we just need to lighten it a little bit. So typically I like to mix my colors uh, in order of hue, intensity, value. So you get the right hue first, then you adjust the intensity by adding the complement or a neutral to it, and then you adjust it to the proper value. So to do that, I need to add a little bit of white. Now, I want just a very, very little bit so you can see I kind of just very lightly dipped the palette knife in there. And we're going to see, probably going to need more. We absolutely need more, so that is probably way too much. We're going to leave a little bit. is looking pretty good and now now that I can see it illuminated with the white now we are going to add a little bit of uh, yellow to make it slightly more yellow So there we have our color. Um, may want to lighten it a little bit more. Maybe what I'll do is I'll grab some of it and I'll lighten some of it. take a second to kind of explain what happened here with my handy dandy color wheel so we're working with a lot of 
um, reds, yellows. Um, we're definitely in this area, the color wheel. And for example, this kind of middle section here, it's like a uh, an orangish red. It's almost that exact color, but we brought it down a little bit uh, to something like that. Now, what I did to lower the intensity was I added a neutral. So in this case, the neutral is burnt on. So that brought it down here. We could also mix the opposite, which in this case is blue green. Uh, rather than mixing some of the uh, cerulean blue, which is an option. And to be honest, you might end up with a cooler, not cooler as in cool, cool color, very awesome color, very interesting color if we use the blue. But we're introducing a lot of complexity into a very small area that, to be honest, is going to absolutely kill me uh, if I maintain that system throughout the entire thing. So the interesting thing is that this pattern doesn't really repeat a whole lot. In theory, this pattern does repeat. It's a fabric, you know. Actually, I think it, it's embroidered. Maybe it's not. It's not embroidered. I think it is, a, you know, textile. So it has to repeat, right? But I, when I was drawing this, I only found a handful of sections that I could identify as repeated. So pretty much all of this is going to have its own kind of mini color systems. And it's just, it's gonna be. A, so um, we, where we can, we are gonna keep this uh, bluish green color. Uh, and really we're just gonna be painting everything else. But in some cases, we're gonna to have to adjust that. Like in this case, I think that color is pretty good. We are going to have to paint in a wrinkle right here. So we'll be working with that. And we'll start that once we get this, this uh, third flower done. Move into some wrinkles. And then I think we're gonna move this way into this section here.
If you look at this, you're going to say, Nougat, that's not symmetrical. You have two people over here and a whole lot of nothing over here. Well, that's because the axis of symmetry is diagonal. And if you look, the leg actually follows that axis. So this is suggesting that axis. Now, if we go to the right of the axis, we have human figure, which is already focal, uh, has a lot of um, uh, visual weight, you could call it, attention. And it's going to be mirrored by the super intricate uh, eye-catching chair. We have this person over here uh, mirroring this bland section down here, but is darker and has a bit more visual weight because of it. So what happens is it's this fan shape. And this section here, if we just take it here, it's like a little rounded area right here. And then this section essentially empty along with this here. This here is kind of just acting as a placeholder for now. I don't know if I want it to be as, as stark white as it is now. I think thinking maybe more of an off-white. I really want to see how this goes first because this is the absolute focal point uh, in theory. You'll see it lies right on that axis of symmetry. And that, even though I said I want the chair to be the focal point, this is the absolute focal point. But my goal is to make this chair equally, if not more, um, visually, um, I want people to look at both. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Say hi to the people, Pepper. They're over there. No knocking down my camera tripod, please. Okay, are you good now? I don't know.
thanks for watching. So beautiful. Thank you, Eats. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm happy with how it turned out. Gonna take so long. But uh, I think it's going to really make, make the pain. Pepper's going crazy. Come on, Pepper. Let's say goodbye. Say goodbye to everybody. Oh. Say goodbye, Pepper. So, thank you. Uh, I'll be back here tomorrow. Same time, same place. So, thank you. Have a good night or a good day. <laughs> Later.